Do either of you see a little button that says start webinar? Oh wait, no, I see it on my side, Never mind. No, but can you make me co-host please? Aloha mai kako. Welcome to our Ahawahine Kuhina Papa webinar. Um, we are waiting for some folks to trickle in as we, we ring in the nine o'clock hour. And um, we just wait for a minute or so and uh, we will get started. While we wait, we will, I'll just go over a few announcements and um, introduction. We, uh, this, this Ahawahine Kuhina Papa series started in October 2020, and the planning committee wanted to offer a series that highlighted the traditional practices and legacies of Hawaiian ohana. We've had presentations on topics such as hula, entrepreneurship, philanthropy, olala Hawaii, and, and much more. We had wonderful feedback from our audience from our past uh, webinar ser series, many of whom asked to have more hands-on workshops. So ANO, our first hands-on workshop of 2022. We plan to have more of these types of hands-on immersive experiences throughout the year. And um, like the one that we have today with Maile. My name is Napua Kassin Fisher, and I'm calling in from Pa'ala Akai in Waialua on the island of O'ahu. And I will be your hostess for today. We would love to hear where you're calling in from. So if you'd be uh, willing to share the aina that you're on for today or where you're from, please share that in the chat or in our Facebook comments. Well, we have someone, Aloha Cindy from Alb Albuquerque, New Mexico. Thank you for joining us. Um, Aloha Cheryl from Eva Beach, but currently in Uanu. Aloha Claire in Kauai. Oh, we have Colorado, Mililani. So many. Mahalo. Aloha everyone. Puna. Papa Kolea. Oh, my kai. Um, as I am in Waialua, you can hear our, our moa, our moa kane, uh, waking everybody up. And okay, let's see. A little bit of housekeeping. We are um, recording this webinar and live streaming on our Facebook and our cross-posting partners on Facebook as well as on uh, YouTube, on our YouTube channel. And in Aloha in California, Germany. What time is it in Germany? That's far, far away. Okay, mahalo. We would like to mahalo our sponsors for our webinar series. Um, this series is sponsored by Hawaii's People Fund um, and also supported by Papua Olalokahi, OED TV, Ekolumeanui, the University of Hawaii, um, Kokua Kalihi Valley's Ho'ulu Aina and Roots Program, and Maili Kukahi Aina Mamona Academy. Aloha from Mexico. Okay, 
Welcome. You have all signed up for our webinar for today, our hands-on art experience with Mailelani. Um, and I'll just briefly introduce Maile. Okay, Tanya Mailelani Nayahu is a Kanaka Maoli Boricua educator, performer, artist, community organizer, and activist of Aloha Aina from the island of Molokai, Hawaii. As co-founder of Kahalehuaka, an online school of Hawaiian knowledge, her teachings are grounded in indigenous philosophies, practices such as Mo'olalo, Olalo Hawaii, Hula, and Oli. She is also the director of Molokai Nuiya Hina Project, a multi-generational community art project that is founded in traditional storytelling. By teaching via various art mediums through the vessel of Mo'olalo, she emphasizes great importance in building communi communication skills, self-confidence, and a new generation of storytellers. Maile and her husband, Hano Hano, share the hip-hop stage as the Paniola Prince and his queen, Maile. Aloha, Maile Lani. Mahalo nui for, for offering this wonderful um, workshop for our Lahui. And I will pass it on to you. Muted. Aloha mai kāko, uh, mahalo no uh, ke ia lā, uh, mahalo no ke kokua ana me ke ia, na mahalo e na holokalamu uh, i kokua i me ke ia. Uh, mahalo nui, thank you everyone for joining us today. I am truly honored to be representing the Ahawahine Kuhina Papa in today's workshop. <laughs> I attended in 2012 and I always just like really admired all those wahine that shared that day. And I'm just really, truly honored to be here today. Um, we're going to be focusing on our inoa, eola ko inoa. So I wanted to introduce myself a little bit about uh, the ohana I come from. Um, I was born on the island of Oahu in Honoluli, Eva. Uh, I was raised between Lahaina and Eva. My parents are Rosemarie Castro Rodriguez. Um, as you heard, um, she's beautiful Borinqua, so I'm half Borinqua. Um, and my father is Leonard Vernon Ferreira, uh, who comes from Hawaiian Chinese and Portuguese descent, both born and raised um, in Hawaii for many generations. And so uh, we're going to talk a little bit our, about our Inoa, and I'll share more about my Inoa story as we share with each other through this process. So I'm gonna share my screen and I wanted to just share some of my slides here. I'm gonna make it big. I'm gonna switch back and forth between um, uh, overhead screen while we do art and these slides. So I wanted to make sure you guys all have the proper materials in front of you for this workshop today. You're gonna to need a penicala uh, with a holoi, uh, which is an eraser. You're gonna need a pepa, preferably, um, you know, the good kind watercolor paper, but any kind of paper will do. If you're gonna use thinner copy paper, be very careful because we're doing watercolors. So you wanna go easy on the vai or the water. You're gonna need pen of vai, which is um, a simple watercolor set. You know, the Crayola kind is fine. Um, you can do some magic with the simple stuff. And then we have a hulu anai, which is a brush. I like the ones that come with the set is a good size. I have one that's a little bit bigger than that. And then you're gonna need penny maka ele ele, preferably a black uh, fine tip one. Um, and then a pola white or a bowl of water for our watercolor painting. Um, now let's go into our uh, beginning protocol. If you are not uh, familiar, um, then we are gonna quickly run through this oli. And this oli is, oli like any other oli is done to prepare for the next step, uh, whatever that step may be. So there are only that are done for particular things. And I thought this one was appropriate. It was, it's a homai and it was composed Haku Ia e Edith Kanaka Ole. And um, it's, as you can see the translation, it says e mai ka ike mai luna mai e. Grant us the knowledge from above because we're about to partake on a journey together. And um, our name stories uh, were conceived before we even came into this realm. So we are gonna tap into some of those other energies to, to guide us and inspire us today. The next line, repeat after me. O na mea huna no eau, no na mele. O na mea huna no eau, no na mele. Let's do the first two lines. I'm gonna read it and I want you to do it with me after. 
ए हो मई का इके मई लुना मई ए ए हो मई का इके मई लुना मई ए सो ग्रांट अस द नॉलेज मो बर नेक्स्ट वन लेट्स डू इट अगेन टुगेदर ओ ना मे आहु ना नो ए आओ नो ना मे ले लेट्स डू इट अगेन ओ ना मे आहु ना नो ए आओ नो ना मे ले concerning the hidden wisdom of songs and i thought this was appropriate because you're going to be writing a mele or a poem mele is a word for song it means to sing and it also means poem so we're going to be composing or haku mele today about our inua okay the next line e ho mai e ho mai that means to grant you know you're bringing that those energies to you and we're going to do it three times so let's do it two more times together e ho mai e ho mai e ho mai e ho mai and it's repeated three times this ho oli When you get to the bottom, the last e ho mai, you're gonna modulate your voice one octave up, and you're gonna go straight into the top line again. So I'm gonna just show you real quick how it sounds, and we'll do it together, okay? We'll ku iluna when we do it for real. We'll stand up, okay? E ho mai kai ke mai luna mai e o na me a o na no e o no na me le. This is new to you. You're muted. You're in a safe space. Let's do this together. But most of all, I want you to really channel those types of energies that you need, and you're trying to ask to grant onto you. Okay. So eku iluna kako. Okay. Okay. Let's start from the top, and I'm just going to give a head nod, and we can all begin together. Okay. Remember to channel, call onto those energies, whatever frequencies that you need to give you guidance to this really awesome process that we're about to partake in today. Okay. E ho mai kai ke mai luna mai e o na me a u na no e u no na me le. Someone keeps uh, raising their hand. I'm not sure how to answer that. You guys know how to check the raising of the hand. If someone, wanted... if if somebody is raising their hand, would you be able to put your question or comment in the chat or the yeah. Q and A, and then we can address it. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna dive a little bit into uh, when we, you know, introduce ourselves in Olelo, Hawaii. Um, Uh, I, it says Bet Wagner keeps raising her hand. If you can please put it in the chat, and the girls will address that. Mahalo. Okay, so it says Moho Alauna introductions. So Velina Mai is a way that we can greet each other. We can also say Aloha, or we can say Ano Ai, 
And then you would respond with it, uh, a greeting as well. And when we, we meet someone, we ask them usually, what is your name? And the answer would look like that yellow speech bubble and it says, o blank, right? And you would ask the person back, right? To extend that courtesy back. And then that person could respond, so when you meet someone, you ask them their name and their name helps you to learn what to call them and who they might be related to. Their inoa also connects them to their mo'okuauhau or genealogy. Yeah, so this is what we're gonna dive into today. And, and if you um, haven't really explored your name, I hope you see it in a whole different light today because there really is a, a mo'olelo or inspiration behind it. So it's interesting that when we introduce ourselves with each other, we use the word ovai, which means who. We don't use the word what is your name. You don't you say who is your name. Because as explained below, you are an embodiment of, of all that came before you. You know, you are not standing there alone in the, in the Hawaiian um, beliefs and ideologies, right? You represent everyone before you as well. So who is your name? And we're going to dive more into that. Who is your name today? Ah, so how do Kanaka Maoli get their names? What I'm gonna do right now is um, I'm gonna start talking about different types of names and then we're gonna go straight into beginning um, our painting. So I'm gonna actually split the screen. Um, so I'm gonna split the screen and I'm gonna get the overhead and I'm gonna explain why we're painting. So make sure you have all your painting supplies in front of you. So let's stop this. I'm just going to stop this and I'm going to open up this, yeah. So this and then this, yeah. And then share the screen. So I'm going to close this there. Oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then do a share of the desktop, Raha. Desktop. No, but I want them to see both, both. yes. Because oh, okay. I'm doing a presentation. So that one, yeah. Sorry, mahalo. Okay, so I'm gonna share my um my slides, which might be a little small, but I, it's only because I wanna share what I'm doing here on the table as well. Okay, so if we look here, we have how do Kanaka Maoli get their names? <clears throat> and um, we have different types of naming practices and they all have names or inoa for those types of naming practices. So the first square here says inoa ho'omana'o. Now, while we're doing this, what I want you to do is just listen to me talk and I want you to start on your paper, get your pencil and I want you to create like a frame or a border because what's gonna happen is we're gonna write a poem in this middle section here. Okay, so with a pencil, I want you to start drawing a design, not too complicated, that's very um, simple, open, doesn't require too much painting and, and detail. Um, like my name is Maile. So I'm gonna draw a vine of a maile that goes all the way around here, okay? Um, Ilikea, my daughter Ilikea, who's right over here next to me, her name has the word keoho kapalai, which is a fern shoot in her name. So she's gonna write something like that. Now, even if you don't have a Hawaiian name, right? You probably know the story or the meaning behind or the origins of your name. So I want you to imagine some, something symbolic that's simple that you can use as a drawing to frame this while I'm talking, okay? So I'm gonna talk about the different types of naming practices. The first one is the inoa ho'omana'o. And as you can see, an inoa ho'omana'o is a name that is meant to honor and remember something or someone. So ho'omana'o means to remember, to recall. And it goes deeper by explaining that this could be an important historical uh, event that happened or someone special to the, the ohana that you wanna kind of commemorate through this name. So um, an example of that is on Molokai, there's a great kahuna, a na'ana named, um, he, was, he was named Kuea, he was born Kuea. And at the age of about 14 or 15, he started to have these visions like vanana or like prophetic type of visions. And being a young boy, he came from this kahuna line, he came from a royal line actually, and uh, you know, long line of kahuna that served different ali'i. And so he went and shared his vision. And in his vision, he saw his uncle, Kamala Lavalu. A lot of people know him as Kama, like Maui Nuya Kama, one of the greatest chiefs of Maui. 
And he saw Kamala Lavalu in battle uh, in Kona and he saw him dying. So he went to Kamala Lavalu and he said, hey, uncle, um, I saw this vision that if you decide to go to Kona and invade during the day, you will not come home alive. And Kamala Lavalu showed no pity, no attention. And he said, oh, little boy, if you making trouble, making up these kinds of stories, you know, and I come back alive, it will be your life that's gonna be at stake, you know, for making trouble. And so Kamala Lavalu, prophecy came true. After that came true, Kuea, this young boy, his name changed. His name changed because of this commemorative event. And he was actually uplifted to a very higher, very much higher status of Kahuna. Um, and so his name became Lani Kaula. Now you might know his name because he's one of the most famous Kahuna in all of Hawaii. Um, and Kaula meaning seer, Lani of the heavens. You'll hear that in a lot of my names. My Hawaiian name is Maile Lani. But what I learned from a kukuna is that when Lani is at the end of the name, like um, Leo Lani, Kalani, Maile Lani, whatever it might be, it's a term of endearment, right? That the, the person who gave you the name um, cherishes you very much, that you are this divine heavenly gift. So they put Lani at the end of the name. But it's quite different when Lani becomes at the beginning of the name, like Lani Kaula where it became a sign of rank. And so that is an example of how a name can change through uh, life events. We also have an Inoa Ula Leo. An Inoa Ula Leo is a spoken name. An Inoa Ula Leo refers to a name that is spoken out loud to someone in the Keiki's Ohana. And Ula Leo is a voice from the spirit. So the name is heard, but not seen. So this is a really interesting one, you know. Um, it's happened to me, I've, I've named, I think I, I lost count, but I think I probably named about 30 something keiki in the last 20 years of my life. And um, some of them come in different forms, yeah, the names. And so this one is when you're, you know, you're looking off into the ocean, you're just sitting on your couch, you're laying on your bed and you can hear as clear as day, a voice come to you and tell you the message. And so that is a message from the other realm. So that's a the uh, inoa ula leo. So it's a voice that's heard by someone in the family or someone pili to that child, but not heard by the rest. It's not seen. So that's what they mean when they say that. The next one is inoa kupuna. So an inoa kupuna, just like how it sounds, is when you are named after a kupuna, an ancestral type of name. So it says when a name is passed down from family member to family member, the name becomes an inoa kupuna. It was up to the giver of the inoa to make sure that there were no kapu or restrictions or harmful influences attached to the name. That's a really important one. So I find that this is a practice that you'll find all throughout the world. Actually, a lot of these are. Um, they're not just Hawaiian practices, right? So a lot of us have are named after grandpa or named after grandma. I know I am. My middle name is Marie. And this is a name from Maria that goes all the way back to, uh, you know, Burigin, back to Puerto Rico. And so all of the women in my direct um, uh, mater maternal line have Marie or Maria in their name. So that is an example of an Inua Kupuna as well. So let's go into this next screen. I hope you guys are having fun drawing. I'll color my, oh, let me move this down here. Okay, so. Next screen. Okay, so we're looking at more names here. Oh, Kahale, how do I get rid of this? Here, Just, I got it, I got it. Okay, so we have the Inoa Ho'ailona. Ooh, so this is a really prevalent one in my naming process. And it's a visionary name. And Inoa Ho'ailona is given because of a vision or a mystic sign seen in nature. This could be the flight of a flock of birds, a vibrant rainbow, a misty fog rolling through a valley and more. So um, this has happened a lot too, where I pay attention. If someone says, oh, can you name my keiki? And, um, you know, I usually ask them at first, have you had any, um, ooh, sounds like somebody's going hunting. <laughs> Molokai action, you hear all those dogs? They're going pig hunting down the road. They're excited. So, you know, somebody will ask me to name their child and I'm like, 
okay, well, have you had any ho'elona or visions in nature that have been really showing up a lot? Or um, have you had, um, you know, signs that you just can't ignore? And so they'll share these thing with, things with me. I'll usually pull it. I'll do a prayer. I'll do an oli. Just like we did eho mai. And so you're really asking same kind of ideas eho mai for guidance, for these signs to show up, for the ulaleo or the voice from the other realm to come and tell me what is the name of this child. So it's a very serious process. It's not like somebody will ask me to name their kid and I'll just be like, open up the Hawaiian dictionary. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of these naming practices have been lost. So like, you know, it's not heva, but a lot of times in our modern day, that does happen. You're like, oh, this sounds pretty. I'll look it up what it means. And then that's the Kiki's name. And of course it still comes with intention. It comes with a lot of aloha. But um, now after today, you have a little bit more knowledge about the naming practices. And then we can hopefully start to revive these traditions. So the next one is the Inoapo. When a name is found in a dream or a moi uhane, it becomes an Inoapo. So po means nighttime. It comes to you at night when you're sleeping. The Inoa can be discovered by a member of the Keiki's Ohana or given to them by someone in a dream. I have had most of the names that come to me are through, um, they are Inoapo. They come when, I, when, I, when I'm sleeping and I'll wake up and I'll write it down, give the Makua parents a call the next day. I'm like, it came, it came, you know, and, and my keiki too. Like, um, you know, I asked my closest friends to name my keiki and they went through that same process. So my son was an Inoa Po. It was one of my best friends that had this beautiful dream. And so he's named after that. And so we have, um, the last one is Inoa Kuamuamu. And Inoa Kuamuamu is an unflattering name that is given to a child to protect them from the spirits that may want to harm them. The name made them sound unappealing and would be changed when the keiki was older. So this is a really interesting one to talk about too, because, um, you know, um, let's see, I'm going to make this big. Because my grandmother, for instance, my great-great-grandmother's name was Po, which means Finnish, Nani. And it was all together one name, Po Nani, right? And she was born in the early 1800s. And so that is a sure sign that this was a common practice and you hear this all around in the old names nowadays you'll hear everything is just so beautiful and so like oh such a beautiful vision to imagine you know the 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 rain sprinkled leaf of the lehua blossom right and you'll hear those names as well but you'll also hear those names like i mentioned uh that aren't so flattering and it was to protect the keiki's mana and their space so with all those things in mind, we'll go back to the screens. I want you guys to start painting with me. So we're going to let this dry while we dive in a little bit deeper to the naming practices. So grab your, your, um, your brush. Where did my brush go? Oh, yeah, no. Okay. So we're going to use a technique um, called flooding. And it's a nice way to control where your paint goes. Okay. So we're going to just... Decide first what, what color you want to start with. We're going to start with just a base color and we can add some other color once we go all the way around and we'll add like a, a second color or a third color. Okay, so I'm going to, of course, start with green because I'm doing my lay. You pick what color you want to start with and you're going to just use water, water valeno on your on your hulu and night on your brush and you're going to just brush your your brush it with water. Okay, a good amount of water. You don't want to flood it. You see how my is shining. Okay. And then right after that, I'm gonna grab the color that I want and I'm just gonna to touch it to the paper very gently, get a good amount on there and it'll just fill in the spaces that are wet. It won't go outside of that space. So when we're doing watercolors, water, water, water colors, I'll say that because it's all water. Yeah, if it's not light like this, you're, using, you're not using enough water. So just move around your page and do the same flooding technique keeping your water um, concentrated in, in, in your design, not outside. And as you move along, you'll see, oh, wow, okay. You start to figure out how to control uh, the amount of paint on your brush um, and just let it do its magic on its own. Yeah, so Maile, um, my grandmother gave me the name Maile, my dad's mom, 
who was Kanaka Maori and Pake. And she gave me the name Maile because um, I really don't know the whole story, honestly. But I do know that she loved hula. She was an avid hula dancer. And uh, my sister and myself uh, were given that gift too of hula from a very young age. And, um, you know, she loved her lei. And maile is a very significant um, lao or type of plant here in Hawaii. You'll see it in uh, ceremonial type of events, rites of passage, like graduation, like weddings, all of those. It's like, you gotta make sure you get a mailele, right? And y'all might be wondering, how come we always get the maile? Well, it's incredibly onauna or fragrant, which is one of the main reasons we love the maile. Um, but what I've learned later in life um, is the symbolism or the kauna, the hidden meaning behind maile. And all of your inoa have hidden meanings, yeah? And they might be kauna that are just specific to you, that you've seen or revealed itself to you. Um, but there might be kauna that was intended by the name giver. But for me, the kauna is um, something that is a cultural belief about maile. And that is that the maile vine, which you find usually at mocha, if you go up in the mountains, go hiking, if you're lucky, you'll come across some maile. And the maile vine is believed to be the umbilical cord uh, to the kupuna. And so that makes sense, right? We wear it on these special occasions, rites of passage, when we don't only want our living family members there, but we want to wear our kupuna with us that day. Isn't that a beautiful thought? Yeah, so that's, that's a big part about why we use maile. It's to bring our kupuna into that space with us. So as you make your way around here, I just want you to continue filling up your mail. You know, I've had, um, I've had, I've named Kiki with more than one of these uh, naming practices. And I'm gonna actually share a story with you in just a minute. Uh, we didn't like a kind of like animated, not really animated, but I had what my, um, my older daughter, Kapili Ula, who is in college right now, um, and she's actually an art major. So she drew these beautiful illustrations for this little clip that I'm about to show you. And it's about a, a girl named Hi'ile Mohalu. And it's just a fictional character that I made up and, and a story about her name, where her name came from. And her name, like I was mentioning, I've named many other kiki with several of these naming, um, naming practices incorporated. I've had names where it, parts of it comes to the dream in a dream and then the parent goes, oh, but I want part of their name to have their, the kupuna's inoa too, right? So it's an inoa po, which is a nighttime dream, as well as inoa kupuna, a dream, uh, a name that came, that is honoring one of their kupuna. You know, so I've had names that incorporate several of these naming practices. Um, so I'm going to share Hi'ile Mohalu's story in just a minute. Right now, I'm going to finish this one leaf, this low. I want you guys to just continue and listen. Yeah, we're, we're multitasking today. Okay, so I'm going to make this smaller here. You can see my ohana is, is joining us painting today. Okay, so let's go to Hi'ile Mohalu's story. Um, where you stay, Hi'ile Mohalu. Oh, yeah, no, Hi'ile is Mo'olelo. Okay. So keep painting. I will make this way for you guys. Aloha. O Hi'ile Mohalu Ko'u Ino. Hi, my name is Hi'ile Mohalu, and I would like to tell you my Mo'olelo Inoa, the story of my name. I was named in part after my tutu, my mother's mom. Her name was Kalei and she passed away before my mother became Hopai with me. While I was in my mama's opu, or belly, she had a dream. In her dream, my tutu came to visit her, and I never met my tutu, but in the dream, she was holding me in her arms. The beginning of my name, Hi'ile, comes from this dream. He means to hold or carry in one's arms as a child, like I was held by my tutu Kalei in my mama's dream. 
and Lei comes from my tutor's name, Kalei. It is also because when she held me in a dream, my mama says that tutu held me near to her heart like a lei. Later on the evening that I was born, the moon was shining bright on a calm night. It was a poem of Hina Mohalu. Mohalu means to bloom like a flower. It also means relaxed. So when it came time to give me my name, they named me Hile Mohalu, the blossoming lei that is cradled and nurtured. What's your name story? Uh, that was fun, huh? Okay. So that was fun. Now I'm going to make this small again so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to finish up. That was actually Ilikea. Ilikea is right over here next to me. I'm painting too today. So that was her voice, uh, my 12-year-old. And then uh, Kapili Ule did the artwork. So let's just continue finishing this. And then I'm going to go on to uh, explaining a little bit more on my slides here. Okay, so there's some really cool examples of traditionally given names, as you can see, like Lili Okalani, Kamaka Eha. So her name right below says what kind of name she has. Can you read that with me? It says Inoa Ho'omana'o. Inoa Ho'omana'o. Right, so Inoa is name, Ho'omana'o is commemorative or memory, right? So let's read about the memory that her name was based on. Lili Ukamaka Eha was born in September 2nd, 1838 to the High Chief Caesar Kapa'akea and High Chiefess Kehokalole. She was named Lili U, which means smarting. And her middle name was Kamaka Eha, which means the sore eye. It may seem as if the baby had an eye problem when she was born, but this wasn't so. The high chief is Kina'u, who gave Lili'u her name, was the one with the sore eye. Isn't that interesting? So Kina'u, actually, cool fact about Kina'u, is um, once Kamehameha II, or Liholiho, had passed away, his brother, Kawikeoli, was not old enough to take the throne. He was still just a teenager. And so uh, there were high regents or Kuhina Nui that took the decision-making power until Kamehameha III was ready to take the throne until he was an adult. Okina'u was the second. So there was Ka'ahumanu and then there was Kina'u. She actually held that high regent seat after the death of uh, Ka'ahumanu. And then the last one was uh, Kikaulu Wahi. So there are three Wahine, cool fact, Three Wahine that held that high regent Kuhina Nui seat, decision making seat, uh, after the death of Liho Liho, Kamehameha II. So I thought that was really cool, cool fact to share. And then there wasn't another Wahine uh, in the ruling seat until Lili'u. And Lili'u herself, like the story says, was named after this memory of Kina'u, her auntie having a sore eye. And you're like, why would you name the kids so or I, right? But that was a very common practice. It was, it was what was happening when Lili U was being born. Auntie had so or I. Yeah. So I finished my low for now. And I want you guys to just continue. Now we're going to learn a, bit, a little bit about Mary Kavena Pukui. If you want, you can go back to the first part that you painted and we can add a second layer of color, right? So you want it to dry a little before you add too much or it's just going to be a mess. So you want to have a nice like uh, brush that's not too wet, right? And then you're, I'm going to grab some yellow and maybe make yellow on the bottom of my leaves, on the bottom of every leaf while I'm still talking. So I want you guys to add a little bit of uh, color, another secondary color if you can. Um, you might not necessarily have to add water, water before. We're not flooding anymore. All we're doing is wetting the brush. Uh, yeah, and make sure you go like, boom, boom. So you wanna take off some of the water from the brush like that off the edge of the bowl, okay? So it says, Mary Kavena Pukui. Well, as a girl, she became ill and a ceremony was held during which an aunt told the Ohana about an Inoa Po. She had kept a secret. Oh, interesting, yeah? So let's see what happened. The old name was Okiia, so removed or cut. And the child was given the Inoa Po instead. So they changed her name. And that was that still is a common practice, right? If someone becomes ill, signs are there like, oh, we can't explain why this person keeps getting ill, um, then the name would be changed. 
So kavena ula o kalani a uh, hiiaka i kapoli o pele kawahine ai honua. Ooh, what a powerful name. The rosy glow in the sky made by hiiaka, that's Pele's sister, reared in the bosom of Pele, the earth consuming woman. And she recovered and grew up to be Mary Kavena Pukui. Isn't that so amazing? So they come, she comes, uh, her mo'okuauha, as I, I was told, comes from that Pele line. Um, I actually, her granddaughter, um, we call her Pele, um, is named uh, after this, this mo'okuauha. So let's go into the next one. Oh, this one's really interesting. So Princess Powahi, we all love our Kelly Powahi. Let's learn a little bit about her name. Now, you know, Pau means to be finished. Ahi is the word for fire. So let's read about it. So it's an Inua Kupuna, which is an ancestral name, and an, an Inua Ho'omana'o, which is a commemorative name. Princess Pohi was named by her parents after an aunt, her mother's sister. When Aunt Pohi was just a baby, she was rescued from a fire because that incident, she was given the name Pohi. This name is special because it's an Inua Ho'omana'o that marks the event of the fire, and it was passed down and became an Inua Kupuna because her auntie had the name. So she took her auntie's name. So uh, Pohi's mama is Konia. So this is, we're talking about um, High Chief is Konia's sister, Pohi, where Pohi's name originates from. So it's a really cool story. I remember being told that as a young child uh, when I attended Kamehameha, this story. And I thought, wow, like, that's so interesting that they would name someone after a fire that you know, probably was very dangerous, but in some way wanted to commemorate it, commemorate it because obviously Antipoa, he survived, right? And so it was something worth commemorating that she survived this uh, ahi, this giant fire. And so that is where Poahi's name comes from. Pretty cool, huh? So let's finish up here and I'm gonna read the next slide for you. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so it says, why do Kanaka Mali change their names? Not all of them change their name, but uh, it has happened, like I explained. There's different reasons. Their, um, their name could be causing problems, behavioral health or mental health. As um, we mentioned before, the next one, um, uh, we talked about Mary Kavana Pukui actually being sick, physically sick as well. And so they did this whole ceremony and auntie said, hey, you know what? There's this name that came to me and I never shared it. And maybe that's supposed to be her name. And so they did this whole na uh, name changing ceremony. Names change during significant life events as well. When a family member passed that a person's name was given to a child like an Inoa Kupuna and Inoa Ho'omana'o, commemorative, right? A family member changes the name when an Amakua or family or personal Akua guardian speaks to them in their dreams. So that would be an Inoa Po as well. So there's different reasons why names can change. So right now we're gonna let this just kind of um, dry and we're gonna actually start writing our uh, writing process. So I'm gonna bring up our writing process here and I'm going to switch this out, move my painting on the side, just let it dry. Can you move that right over there so it can dry? Okay, and then I'm gonna actually get a piece of paper. Um, can you grab me a big piece of paper, like a coffee paper over there? I want you to get like just a scratch paper, piece of paper right now. And um, we're gonna start drafting out um, ideas for our mele or our poem. And I have directions here, okay? So I'm gonna again, share both screens. And I'd like to make this a little bigger. Oi, too big, ha. <laughs> How do you make it? Oh, 50. There you go. Okay. So we're going to prep our, we did prep our canvases while we shared about Inoa. Now we're on this next step here, right on separate paper. What kind of name do you have? So grab your pencils when you're pal painting. If you're still painting, don't worry. These directions will be on the, on the board for a while. Okay. Um, if you are cakey, then um, do your best and you have your, hopefully you have your makua near you, but I will guide you through this as much as possible. Um, and it doesn't matter what writing, um, level you're at, beginning writer, advanced writer, uh, we can make it work for you, okay? So let's look at the very per, um, first thing we have to do. Write on a separate piece of paper, what kind of name do you have? 
So think about your name. You can choose your first name. You can choose your middle name. You can choose any name you want uh, to honor today in this exercise. Is it any noa? Is it any noa ho'omana'o? Is it a commemorative name that uh, is named after a certain event that happened that maybe your makua, your parents, or your grandparents wanted to say, oh, um, you know, there was a very special uh, moment, you know, 30 years ago when Papa and me fell in love and um, this happened that night or this song played that night or, you know, that kind of thing. And so you're, you named a child after this special moment or commemorative type of moment. Um, the next one is Inoa Ula Leo or a spoken name that comes from another realm. So it was heard by someone in your family, uh, sent as a sign and said, you know, you could hear as clear as day, that is gonna be the baby's name, okay? And then the next one is Inoa Kupuna. Are you named after someone in your family? And then the next one is Inoho Ailona, a visionary name that came to you in signs in nature. And then the next one is Inoho, or it came in a dream. Someone had a dream and said, oh. you know, a lot of people will be like, I saw the baby before the baby was even born, and this is the baby's name, or, or something like that. The last one is Inoaku Amu Amu, or an unflattering name. Okay, so <laughs> whether your name is Olelo Hawaii, English, uh, you know, uh, Farsi, whatever origins you come from, uh, think about this because a lot of these practices could fit to many different cultures around the world. So I want you to think about the, your name, where it came from. Okay, so write that down. I think mine is an. My name is Inoa Ho'omana'o, I think. So I'm right, Inoa Ho'omana'o. Right, so that's a good question. So Ilikea's name is a long name. And her name is Kawahine Ilikea Ika Ulu Vehi Okeho Kapalai. Okay, so Kawahine is an Inoa Kupuna. Our families, uh, we come from the Kawahine Koa Ohana from Maui. So that's, you want to write down Kupuna, Inoa Kupuna. Um, so that, that part, the uluvehi is in Inoa Kupuna as well. And so um, uluvehi is her, father, is her father's mother's name. So she also carries an Inoa Kupuna in the uluvehi. Yeah. The keoho kapalai part, which is the fern shoot, that kept coming to me um, in like Inoa Ulaleo. So that's a perfect example of that part of her name. Kept, I kept hearing it, even though it wasn't there. Kyoho Kapolai, Kyoho Kapolai, all through my pregnancy, Kyoho Kapolai. And as I became more and more Hapai, you know, third tri uh, trimester, I started to hear mele or songs that kept saying Kyoho Kapolai in it. And so I was like, whoa, her name needs to have Kyoho Kapolai in it, which is the fern shoot, you know, that little curly fern shoot. And it's very symbolic of new beginnings and new life. And um, Kyoho Kapolai, um, yeah, so that's her, her, that's her whole name. So it's mostly Inoa Kupuna and Inoa Ulaleo. So have those discussions, whether it's with a family member or um, with yourself. My husband's name is Hano Hano, and he was named after his tutu man, yep. his grandfather, who's, who's Edwin Hano Hano Neahu. Simple. Simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, write about what kind of like, Inoa you have. The next thing you want to do right under that is what does your name mean, right? So even if I look at my first name, which is Tanya, so it has Russian origins. I'm not Russian at all, but um, it, it actually comes from the um, origins of the name of the queen of the fairies, which I thought was really cool. It's, I think it's Tatanya is her name. And so I was like, oh, that's really cool. So you can choose whichever name. Um, what does it mean? What does your name mean? So I'm going to choose my Hawaiian name, which is Maile Lani. And um, it means the heavenly Maile vine. Okay. These are just notes. We're going to write our poem in a, in, in a bit. It's going to, we're going to use this to inspire our poem. Okay. So the next one says, what is your name story 
in a few sentences. Who named you and why? So I'm just gonna start with that one for me. So I'm gonna write about my grandma and why she named me, just in one sentence. There's the next sentence you're gonna answer and they're all on the board. Okay, after you answer that one, it's, is there an explanation for your name? There might be and there might not be. What do you know about it, right? Just shaking the table, okay? And then the next one is, is there Kauna in the name? Is there Kauna in the name? That is there a hidden meaning in your name or a figurative meaning in your name? And then the next one is um, hidden meaning. Is it, like I mentioned, is there a figurative or poetic or metaphorical meaning? So when you hear the word Kauna, it's often used in Mele poetry, but it's used in um, all of our Olelo, especially names. So the names may appear to mean one thing, literally, when you look it up in the dictionary and directly translate it, but what are the true intentions of the name giver, right? Is there a deeper hidden meaning behind it? So I'm gonna write my sentences for these and I want you to do the same thing, okay? Just one sentence to answer each. Okay, okay so let's see. My grandmother named me because she loved my life. <laughs> Simple as that. And she loved hula. A lot of times in hula we use maile as well. Maile is a maile is a kinolau of laka or a body form of laka. And Laka is one of our Akua Hula, you know, our female deities of Hula. And um, she's embodied in the Palai ferns, like Ilikea's name, Kyohoka Palai. The Palai ferns, she's embodied in the Maile um, and the Loa'e and other things um, as well. So that's another reason. So I put, she loved Maile and she loved Hula. So those things tied together. Um, is there an explanation for your name? Hmm. So I, you know, I, I'm going to go a little bit more into that story of the kauna of my name and the umbilical cord and the pico. So I'm going to write about that. Maile is a symbol of the umbilical cord. That connects ancestors or kupuna. And I'm even going to add that it's worn during ceremonial rites of passage. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so keep writing, no rush. But once you're done writing, as you can see on the very bottom of the screen, it says the last directions. Now circle all the key and important words from these sentences. This will be your word bank. Try to use them all when we're composing the poem. And I'm gonna guide you through the poem. We're gonna do some fun prompts. Now, if you are a creative writer and you want to, you don't want to use the prompts that I give you, please feel free to write your own poem, however you want to structure it. But it's going to be just a nice kind of framework to guide you through the poem process. So I'm going to circle all the words that I really like on here that I think is significant and important. And I want you to do the same thing, okay? I also use the word pico. Okay, so like I pulled out words um, 
I like the word symbol too. I like the word love too. <laughs> so, okay, so I, I did Inoaho Omanao, I circled, I circled heavenly, I circled my Levine, I circled grandmother, I circled the word love and hula and symbol and umbilical cord, or also I wrote pico. And then I wrote, I circled kupuna ceremony and rites of passage. So you can circle whatever feels good to you. Um, but you want to have at least, I would say anywhere from five, six, seven words circled so we can write a nice poem. Okay. So now let's go to these prompts. Okay. So um, I used up my whole paper here. I'm going to try and write a, a little section here. You can get another paper if you need another paper. I'm just going to go with it because all my words are right here on the same paper. Now let's write these six lines. Okay, so these are the prompts for each of your six lines. So you could write these words. It says, I am who I claim to be, dot, 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 dot. Fill it in. Use any of these key words. You can put your name there if you want. You can put the translation of your name there if you want. You can even write something else like um, a child of, you know, the, the, the flowing streams and the crashing waves. So something that, that has raised you, that has made you who you are, I want you to finish that sentence there. If you can incorporate one of these word bank words, kudos to you, okay? And then the next line, a keiki of dot, 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 dot. You could put your parents there. I mean, that's kind of like the, the most obvious thing that you would fill it in. in. But you could also write, um, you know, a keiki of um, hula, um, my kupuna, you know, I could use words that are here, my heavenly kupuna um, and hula, something like that. A gift, I am a gift from dot, 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 same idea, right? Finish the sentence, try and incorporate these keywords here. This is who you are right here on this paper. It, it is true that dot, 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 finish that sentence, right? The next one, that is because fill in the blank. And then last one, eola ko'u inoa. That means my name will live on. Eola ko'u inoa o. And then you're going to put your name, the one we're talking about from this poem. So that last line really is where you want to kind of end with your name. And I use the same structure as a mo'oku'au or when we recite our genealogy, where we always end with the line, eola ka'ohana. So maybe the family live on. And then we say the name of the family and everybody in the group exclaims Eola. And that means, yes, live, thrive, right? So it's kind of an acknowledgement of the rest of the group saying, we value you. We value your name. We value your ohana. We value owe oi. Who are you, right? Not what is your name? Who is your name? So let's write this together. I want you guys to spend like um, a few minutes doing this. And um, yeah, just start writing. I am. Um, and this is your first draft, right? We're, we're going through this fun writing process. I am who I claim to be. I'm going to even add in some um, some describing words. When I think of maile, I think of the word onauna. So I'm going to add the word onauna here for like fragrant. Okay. Onauna. And I'm going to rewrite this poem in the middle of that painting that we did, but we're letting it dry. So this is just our first draft. A keiki of hula and ceremony. I love ceremony. It's so important. Okay. I am make room over here. Running out of room. Yeah. 
I am a gift from my Ooh, I could put like, I am a gift from the Pico of my Kupuna. Those are some words I have. And you know, if I really write anything that you're like, I kind of like that idea, you're free to borrow. I don't own it. <laughs> okay. And then the next one is, it is true that I'm going to start writing those lines down here. So I'm just making room and I'll transfer it to my drawing later. It is true that so I'm going to cross out the words that I've used already. Wow, it is cool. I am. Yeah. Myla, there are some questions in the chat. Yes. What's that? Let's see. Okay. Questions in the chat. Wow. Okay. Is there somewhere in the poem where we actually incorporate our actual name? Yes. So on the very bottom. So eola kou inoa o. And then you're going to write your name. I was just explaining, like, when we do our genealogy in Hawaiian, we end with um, saying the name of our family and ex exclaiming it. So that's the finale, right? So you're building up. And then you go, this is my name. Eola ko'uhana, may my name live on. And then o and your name. So the okina o is a marker before a proper name. Um, let's see. Can you go through those lines as you do them again? What, what? we are supposed to do right or we just choosing a word yeah so like as you can see what i'm doing is i'm using the beginning of those sentences that i gave you and i'm filling in the blanks with my own story i'm pulling words that i circled from answering those questions okay so i can scroll it down a little right right here so the first question is what kind of a name is it and then these are the other question what does it mean what is your name's story? Who named you and why? So once you answer these questions, I have all these answers here that I wrote down for my name story. And then I circled all my favorite words. I'm using the word the sentence prompts and I'm just kind of filling in the rest of the sentence using some of those keywords. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show you my example in just a minute. Let me see if there's any more questions. Good questions, guys. Um, can you go through those? Um, Oh, nice. Claire is like, I'm that I have an Inoa Homanao, a commemorative name. I was named after St. Claire, right? See, exactly. That's a that's a good example. Beautiful. Okay. I hope that was clear for everybody. Um, oh, okay, a word and added words. Yes. Yes. So start with I am who I claim to be. Um, da 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 using some of these keywords. So like mine is I am who I claim to be. And then I used onauna, which means fragrant, because the Miley Fern is fragrant and gentle. I am who I claim to be, onauna and gentle. And then my next sentence is a keiki of, and then I used the word hula and ceremony, because I circled hula and I circled ceremony. And then the next sentence is, I am a gift from, and then I wrote the pico or the, the, the navel, the umbilical cordia of my kupuna. So I used two words, pico and kupuna there. And then it is true that I am loved because I have the word loved. I love, I like that. And um, I'm going to write heavenly because I really like that word heavenly. That's what my grandma intended when she gave me that name. Okay. And then that is because I have two more sentences. And there's a bunch of other words that I could be using. So I use this one. This one. I'm going to start crossing out words that I've used. Um, you did your job. me. Oh, okay. That is because my grandmother. That's one of my other words that I circled. Grandmother gave me that name. Um, loved the Miley vine. So that's another part of my words that I circled. Loved the Miley vine. And then I'm on my last sentence, Eola Ko'u Inoa, and I'm just going to put my name, right? So, Eola Ko'u Inoa O, and I'm going to put Maile Lani. And then everybody will go, Eola, because they want to, you know, support 
and say, yes, may your name live on forever. Okay, so I have quite a messy paper here. These are my answers. I circled all my keywords and then I wrote all my sentences here. And so what I'm gonna do is take these sentences and I'm gonna transfer them onto my painting. Okay, now make sure that your painting is dry. If it's not, what you can do is just get a piece of paper like this, like I did, and I just cut it out of a regular paper. And then um, you could just glue it on like this. Or if it's dry enough, you can begin to write. Um, I would suggest using, like I said, um, a fine tip marker. So it says, I have a language question. Does Moana need an article in front of it, like the ocean? Ka Moana. You could put Ka, K-A, -E and then space Moana. That actually is in my daughter's middle name. Tiare Moana is her name. So yes, Moana, um, you don't need, if you're writing it in an English sentence, <laughs> you could say the Moana. But if you want to put it in Olelo Hawaii, you would say Kamoana. Okay. So I'm going to begin rewriting my poem here in this empty space here. Okay. Make sure that I don't smear anything. And I, I think we're going to have time to share. I'm really excited. Um, if anybody is interested in sharing their poems. You would write your name on the very top as the po'oino or the name of the poem. So I'm going to write my lelani. Right there. Okay, my lelani. And then I'm going to rewrite my, my uh, lines very slowly because we're doing pen now. And I hope I don't make a mistake. <laughs> I need a better pen. Can you grab me a better pen? Or can you just switch from here? I am who I claim to be. Unauna. And gentle. Okay. I need a better pen. This is not working. Is it the same one? Thank you. That always seems to happen to me. My pens like to go kind of dead. <laughs> Kiki of. It keeps happening, Booba. Ceremony. So I'm thinking hopefully we can all be done by about 10 15. And then we'll have a good like 10 minutes if anybody feels like sharing. Just get me a regular call. Okay. Yeah, another uh, type of pen over there, please. Switch out my pen. Mine not working too good too. You not can do it in pencil though, right? You can do it however you want. We're just getting another um, pen to write with because our pens aren't working good. Thank you. Gift from the... Hey, good. Thank you for the other pen. So kupuna, cool fact about the word kupuna. Um, when it's more than one kupuna, it's a plural. You want to put a kahako over the first u or u. Uh, and that makes it a plural. And that same rule applies for the word makwa, which is parent. Uh, it becomes makwa with a kahako over the first vowel. A gift from my kupuna. It is true that I am loved and heavenly. It's kind of weird for me to write something like that. It seems kind of arrogant, <laughs> but 
you have to think about the intentions that were given when the name was given to you. Um, and just by me answering these questions in my sentences and coming up with these words, I know that they are true. And so I'm just writing the truth. <laughs> That's what was the intentions behind the name that I am loved and heavenly. And then we can go back and add details to our painting after. And then that is because my grandmother loved the my levine. Very, very dear to her. And then my last one is Eola, right? To live. And when we hear the word Eola, it means to live. And you'll hear often um, Eola Kalahui, right? May the Lahui or our kingdom of Hawaii thrive and live on. Um, you hear Eola, Eola Kavai or Eola Kavai. We are given life because of water. You heard that a lot lately with the whole uh, Kapukaki or the Red Hill um, action, right? Ola, 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 big word in our culture. Okay, and I'm gonna just add, while you guys are finishing up your writing, I'm just gonna kind of add to my maile. I think I wanna add a little bit of blue here and there. Um, and you guys can do the same. And like I said, I wanna, I wanna um, get some volunteers. So we'll do about two more minutes, three more minutes of finishing up your writing till 10.15. In the meantime, I'm just gonna to add to my painting. And if you're done writing, you can do the same. I like this blue action in my Miley leaves. Why not, right? And remember, you can always add water to kind of make the color blend. So I'm just gonna do that while you guys are finishing up. If you do want to share, um, you know, while you're just in between time, practice, practice reciting it. Um, and uh, whether we're muted or not, I want you guys to practice after, after whoever shares, when they say Eola, we all exclaim Eola. So we are lifting each other up in this space. Um, and really the, 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 the whole idea behind this life, this time here that we have in this realm is how are you going to leave your story? How, what kind of legacy will you leave behind? And a lot of times this legacy is embodied in your name. And so a big part of personal growth is kind of letting this guide you, understanding your story in all the different forms, um, exploring it. Once you start really opening up these doors, you'll be surprised at the ho'ailona or the signs that will appear to you to answer these questions. A lot of times, like even when I name a child, like I said, I will say out loud, uh, show me. Help me with this process because there's no way I can do it alone. Yeah, there's so many more things uh, involved in naming a child. And so it has to really come from this humble place uh, that you're seeking guidance. Eho Mai, like I shared with you guys, is a great one. You can find that online uh, to guide you through any type of, of process where you're like, oh, I'm not really sure. I'm going to need a little bit more kokua from the unseen. Yeah, whether it's your kupuna, whether it's your amakua, whether it's just vibrational frequencies that you need to tap into. And so when we do these oli, we do these pule, these chants, these prayers, they're not, they're not just words. We all know that words have power, words have frequencies. We have a olelo no eo, that's um ika olelo no keola. You hear ika olelo no keola, there's that word ola again, right? So in words or language, there's life. And then the second part of the proverb is um ika olelo no kamake. So in the in words, in the language, there's death. Right? So it's up to you 
how you are going to use your words. And going back to the naming practices, right? You're not gonna give a name that this, it's really believed that this child's destiny is embodied in a name. And that goes back to like, oh, that's why Mary Kavena Pukui had to change her name, right? Because she was getting sick. And they said, oh, maybe that's not the right name. Okay, so this is mine. I mean, it's a work in progress. I'll probably add more to it, but let me close out this screen so we, I can get a full screen of me. Um, it says, this will be archived on the Ahawahine FB and YouTube. Yes. So you'll be able to rewatch it. Oh, that's a great question. Thank you. Somebody else was asking me earlier. So it says, where can we, I get the access, the replay? I will have to access audio uh, then. And it says the recording will be immediately accessible on FB. It will also be available on ahawahine.org and there, they will be archived on the Ahawahine FB and YouTube. Oh, mahalo Ahawahine, you guys are awesome. Okay, so now you can see my whole Ohana's work, yeah? Look at that. So Ili Ke over here did the fern shoots, the keho kapalai. I did the maile ferns, I mean the maile vines here. Um, hano Hano, what, can you explain a little bit about um, your color and inspiration behind here? Um the 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 edge of a star oh nice so the word hano hano means to shine brilliantly and we heard it in like nahoku hano hano awards right so na meaning a plural the hoku star so it's star the stars and then we're describing the stars as hano hano the describing word comes after the noun so um hano hano means to shine brilliantly and a really great description is when you look at the star the brightest star that you see in the sky is the hoku hano hano it's outshining the rest. So he decided to do like these corners of the star over here to inspire. And then Ilike, like I said, the Kyohoku Balai or the um, Palai Fern shoots. Um, so I'm gonna share and I'm hoping that other people, oh yeah. Okay, somebody wrote Han is the correct, is this the correct way to say I am adopted? Um, you could put Han Hanaiia, yeah, adopted. It makes it kind of like it was done. So right after Han Hanai, Kalamai, Hanai, and Hanai has a kahako over the first A. Yeah, so it's Hanai and then space and then Okina I A, Ia, and then O. That means I was adopted. If you're born, it's Hanau Ia O, right? And you'll see that in the QA. Someone asked that QA. So mahalo. Okay, so I'm gonna share mine. As you can see, you guys are already probably wrote, um, read it. And then I'm gonna um, stop this overhead and then we'll hopefully have some of you guys get to share and then we'll have the Wahine of the Aha close it up for today. And we'll have, uh, we'll probably stay open for like Q and A or talk story at the end. Okay, so um, I'm gonna read mine and then are you able to go over the last line again? The last line is right here on my paper. Can you see that? It says, Eola kou inoa. Eola kou inoa. And then you're going to put your name right there. So I'm going to write it in the chat. Eola kou inoa. Oh, and then you're going to put your name. Okay, so I just put it in the chat for Tony. Or it wasn't, yeah, well, Tony asked the question. Um, and then Le Maile said, please raise your hand if you'd like to share. Yay, thank you, Le Maile. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share and I'm going to stop this overhead um, thing so you can just see me. <laughs> Hui, aloha mai, everybody. Okay, so this is, this is my artwork. This is my artwork here. And I'm going to read my poem for all of you. My Mele Inoa. So this is my name poem. Maile Lani. I am who I claim to be, Onauna and gentle, a keiki of hula and ceremony. I am a gift from the people of my kupuna. It is true that I am loved and heavenly. That is because my grandmother loved the Maile vine. Eola ko'u inoa. Oh my Lelani. Yay! That was fun. Okay, Ilikia, do you want to share? 
Yeah. Can you, can you come over here and come sit? Come come right. Come just so they can see your beautiful face. This is my beautiful baby girl. Sit right here, and then we have some volunteers. Okay, go for it, Ilika. Okay, so my artwork. Oya konamea. Okay. And I am who I claim to be, Alohine Ilika, a kiki of Palai ferns and flowing streams. I am a gift from my kupuna, mm -hmm. which who I am named. It is true that mm -hmm. I am. It is true that I am a product of all who came before me. That is because the Uruvehi of Moroka'i guided me to this earth. Eola, Eola, Eola. Hanno, do you want to share? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, although Ahawahine, you know, we, um, their programs are mostly directed for Hine. I, I think it's really awesome that, you know, when you can bring in the Kane in to join in with Ahawahine and celebrating our mm -hmm. ourselves and who we are. Oh, somebody said Eola in the chat. I love it. Okay. Hano Hano, I am who I claim to be, a guiding light, a keiki of a night sky full of stars. I am a gift from outstanding moku, mo'oku auhau. It is true that I am one of the brightest stars you will see. That is because my makua lifted me up. E ola. Koinoa or Hano Hano. Eola. Yes, I love that. I love that. And that's so true. Hano really takes that name seriously. His tutu man was very um, loved and respected on Moloka'i. And so holding that name is, is a kuleana too, right? Yes. To hold. Yeah. So I love that. Okay, so volunteers. Um, Le Maile, you can take it away and um, have them share, please, if, if that's okay. Aloha Marina, you should be able to turn on your camera and share with us. Can I be unpinned or do I do you want to keep me pinned? Am I unpinned? Okay, cool. Yes. yes. Mahalo. Okay, so if you want to, I think it's Marina. You can show your camera and unmute. There we go. Uh I need permissions to hold on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there we go. This is, please ignore the arrow, don't judge it. It's been 30 years since no I grabbed a set of watercolors. So <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be waves. Supposed yeah. to be. And there we go. So oh, my name is Marina. Marina. Hey. I am who I claim to be, a lover of the sea, a kiki of a sailor. I am a gift from Kamoana. It is true that you can't bring me down. That is because you can't control a force of nature. Eola ko uinoa o Marina. Eola! Eola! Marina! Eola! <laughs> Yay! I love it! Eola, Eola. We are named Mahalo. Mahalo. Yes, oh, can we have another volunteer? I, I'm, that made me so happy. I can't wait to hear the rest. That was good. That was good. Marina. <laughs> okay. So I think, is it Tony? Oh, wait. Yes. Yes. Aloha, Tony. Tony. Hey. Aloha. Um, Aloha. Okay. So I'm going to kind okay. of move to the side. Okay. Um, I am going to um, try to add some yellow. I try to do something a little tribal Aloha on the <laughs> corners. Um, so I wrote, I am who I came to be inspirational through parenting, a keiki of Perez and Centeno genes that is a gift. I am a gift from life through past relatives. It is true that love comes from within my family. This is because I'm gracious from past genes. Inoa. Yeah. Um, Tony Aloha always. And, uh, yeah, Aloha, Tony. And uh, go Raiders. I just want to let you know I'm a special <laughs> education teacher, and I'm going to do this um, on Monday with my um, students. Please, ooh, yeah, please Tony. Totally. Please do. Yes, sir. Yay. Mahalo, Tony, for yeah, sharing. Ma Mahalo, too. <laughs> Angela, are you our next volunteer? 
Keola, Eola, Eola. Okay, Angela, can you unmute? Um, can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Oh, mahalo. Mm -hmm. Aloha. 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 Oh, pretty. Wow. Oh, wow. I am who I can, I am who I claim to be, Shanghainese, a keiki of kindness. I am a gift from Akua Hine. It is true that peace and safety are in my life. That is because I have been honored. E ola ko'u inoa o shao an ame Angela. E ola. That was awesome. Mahalo. Oh, boy, Hawaii. We have some time, guys. Who wants to share? Thank you. I love that we have extra time. This is so important to, to uplift each other. Okay, so whoever is next in line, it looks like uh, Hanale. Yeah. Hanale, can you unmute? Yeah. Okay, my kai. Aloha, Hanale. Aloha. Um, so, I kind of messed up a okay. little bit. No more mistakes. No more mistakes. Beautiful. Yeah. I, uh, I wrote, I am who I claim to be, a uh, strength, a keiki of length. I'm a gift from my kapuna. It is true that I am righteous, and this is because of my choices. Eola Kouinoa or Henry Madaris. Yeah, Eola. <laughs> Madera. The Maderas. And my maiden name is Ferreira. So I know, you know, we have those Portuguese roots in Madeira. Nope. <laughs> Eola, Henry. Beautiful island of Madeira, which I hope to go through. So Eola, Eola, Eola. So who would be next? Mahalo, Bara. Hui. Aloha. Aloha. Um, mahalo so much for this class, Kumo. This is... Um, this is so um, awesome. I wanted to give a little story before I, I show you my um, poem. Um, it's because I'm on this journey to learn about my um, mo'oku hao hao and my name. So, um, so it's been a journey, but this class has really um, kind of like um, is bringing everything together because of my name. But here is my, I don't know if you could see it. Yes, I do. Beautiful. Okay. Um, and what I call my name, Dorcas, is my first name. However, I am Kanaka. My middle name is Lelehua. But I focused on my first name, Dorcas, because I know nothing of that name. But, are, you, are you related to the Hussey Ohana? Oh, Ole Kumu. Oh, that's a not big that I know of, I should that's say. It. I'm not sure of, I might be, but I'm on the journey of uh, learning my mo'oku hao hao right now. I hope I hope it all clears its way for you. And today is the beginning, yeah? Ah, um, but I wrote my, um, my mele based on my journey. So it might be kind of choppy, but I gotta tell you, Kuma, when you told us to just do the borders um, of our painting, for some reason, my whole, Manao went in a different direction. And I'd like to show you what I did. Hey. Not that I wasn't paying attention to instructions, but I don't know if you could see it. And oh, what no. it is, is it, it's, a, it's a picture of my journey trying to find out about my name. Oh, that was upside down, no? Sorry, can you see it? Um, uh, not, yeah. not good, not good. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's the journey of finding out about my name. And um, in the background, um, I felt as though it was my kapunas hiding behind the tree because I have not been able to find out the meaning of my name. Because what I found, found out during my mo'oku uh, hao hao is that my name goes back five generations. And I don't know why I got the name. Well, I don't know the history of the name, but I'll go ahead and start reading um, what I have written in the mele. I am who I am, I claim to be because the strong mana wahini I've grown into. A keiki of several generations of wahini that I know no nothing of except for my mom. I am a gift of my kapuna that came through their pickle through me, through mine. It is true that this inoa has made me ikaika, 
of who I am. That is because through my pickle, I am the individual that will ho'u mana'u va'nui, carried it on, persevere. Um, Iola ko'o inu o blakes. Iola. Iola. But, um, Iola. I'm, I'm a I'm a wuss. I cry at everything, but <laughs> since the beginning of your class, I just felt like there was so much going on on the inside, and then coming down to the melee, it was so easy to just have the words flow. Yeah. And I'm also learning o Olelo, so I want to make sure that I fine tune this so that the words that I've placed on on Pala Pala here um, turns into the uh, Olelo that it needs to be. Mahalo, mahalo again. Yes, mahalo, Nui. Mahalo. Napua, um, do we have any more volunteers? Mahalo, Nui, for sharing. Are we going to close? How many more? A few more, and then we'll close up. Yeah, maybe we'll just uh, end with the, the with Tiana and Kiholani. And then. Okay. 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 We have okay. The next if you can um, do your camera, Lee. Oh. Hey, I see. Oh, those are our last two volunteers. I see Lalei. <laughs> I see Lalei and Lei. <laughs> so I think those are our last two volunteers. Lalei, since I can see you, can you do yours, please? Can you unmute? Aloha, Lalei. Long time no see. Aloha. Hey, <laughs> so good to see you. Thank you for this. Hi. <laughs> okay, here's my artwork. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> so Lale uh, Relea is my Inoho Ilona. Um, I am who I claim to be, beloved and crowned in leaves of triumph, a keiki of the sun, Aina, and gladness. I am a gift from Hokulea and my kupuna. It's true that I am like a sun starlit lay. That is because I radiate love and light. Eola ko'u inoa o lale relea. Eola. Yes, you do. Oh, I agree. <laughs> Mahalo, Mahalo. Lale. I think Mahalo. we have two more volunteers to close our awesome workshop up. I, I had so much fun with you guys. So I think we have Tiana. Ha -ha. Yeah. No problem. Tiana, can you unmute Tiana? And then you will take the stage. Oh. No, I didn't. Okay, it's your turn. Okay. Aloha. Wow. <laughs> this is my artwork, but I couldn't finish it because it's okay. you can finish after. Time, but I got the other paper. Okay, can you can you read it to us? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am who I claim to be a blessing, a cakey of my Makuas. I am a gift from above. It is true that I am beautiful, that it is because I am my Makuas pride and glory. Eola. Eola. Oba. 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 And you can always go back and finish your art. I'm so proud of you. It's so awesome. Beautiful. Eola, Eola. I think we have one more. Yeah. Thanks, love. That was beautiful. Mahalo, baby. Okay, oh, wait, oh, wait, what eh? is it? Lay or oh, oh, you know, okay, you're taking the day. Lay, you know, if you can see, I keho lani aloha keho. I I am who I claim to be the precious dewdrop of, from heaven, a keki of aloha. I'm a gift from my kupuna. It is true that I am precious by from heaven. That is because life begins with water. E ola ko'u inoa o Ivan Kiholani Yukwan Yang. E ola. 
Hey, hola. Que Pavlani, that's such a beautiful name. Awesome. Oh, Henanino, my kai. Blue Woo. drops from heaven. <laughs> Do we have any more in Apua? Those are so fun. So fun. I think um, Kehaulani was the last. Okay, my kai. So I I guess just mahalo, no? And um, Napua is going to take um, the panina or the closing of today. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mahalo, no? To everyone for participating and sharing. I put in the chat if you feel moved to share your art on social media please use our hashtag and and tag us so that we can see and we can share it on rn2 mahalo nui kumu maile for an amazing workshop um i love that you you weaved in mo olalo and olalo hawaii and um i think everybody very much enjoyed it we're gonna pull up a slide um for our next webinar it's going to be Nawahine Kahakalau. Um, the title of the webinar is Ea Education with Aloha for an Independent Hawaii featuring Dr. Ku Kahakalau and her daughters Iini Maikalani and Polani Makamai. And um, it's going to be Thursday, April 28th at 7 p.m. Our usual scheduled webinars are the last Thursday or the fourth Thursday of the month um, at 7 p.m. But we wanted to give more time for this webinar, since it was hands-on and wanted it to be more uh, a better scheduled time for Kiki to participate also, because 7 p.m. is a bit late for Kiki. Uh, and follow us on our Instagram and Facebook if you're not already. We also have our website, www.ahawahine.org, that also has our website, our uh, webinar updates, and we'll have the recording for our previous webinars, even from um, 2020 and 2021 and oh 7 p.m is 2 a.m is that in in germany no wait maybe on the continent <laughs> but we'll have it recorded so mahalo nui everyone for joining have a wonderful weekend hope to see you next next month aloha mahalo mahalo <laughs> that was awesome. Okay. Oh, okay.